when we talk about scleroderma, we're typically talking about systemic sclerosis, which means there is involvement of, of the uh, internal organs. Scleroderma is classified according to the extent of skin thickening. So you have diffuse scleroderma, which is scleroderma where you have skin thickening everywhere, specifically meaning you have it proximal or above the elbows or the knees, as opposed to limited scleroderma, where skin thickening is limited to occur distal or below the elbows or knees. And this is important because patients with diffuse scleroderma, they tend to have very active disease where they have a lot of skin thickening very early in the disease. And along with that, they tend to develop internal organ complications very early in disease, so essentially in the first two years or so of disease, as opposed to patients with limited scleroderma where their skin thickening may occur over many years or decades and their internal organ involvement actually occurs over decades. There's no FDA-approved therapy for the treatment of scleroderma currently, so there are a number of drug trials which are both industry as well as NIH-supported um, therapy therapies for systemic sclerosis by itself or the internal organ complications. Um, and these are new evolving therapies which are targeted at specific locations in the pathways that we feel are important in developing fibrosis. Therapy also depends on your clinical classification. So for instance, patients with diffuse scleroderma, because they come in with very active skin thickening, which occurs over you know, a period of one or two years, along with a high risk of internal involvement, we do typically treat those patients, usually with drugs that suppress their immune system, since scleroderma is it itself an autoimmune disease where the immune system becomes dysregulated and starts attacking self. The field of scleroderma is actually, I think, moving forward at a much more rapid pace now than it has in the past. One of the things that's helping facilitate that is that there's quite a bit of collaboration now, both among those scleroderma centers in the U.S., of which there are probably 12 to 15, as, a, as well as those that are in Europe. So one of the things that we've been really working with with other centers is working to collaborate. We recently created a model that looked at patients presenting very early in their disease and predicted whether or not um, what their likelihood of mortality or dying was within the next two years. And this is something that we validated within our own population. We've also used European collaborators to also validate that the model works. And this is important for clinical care because the clinician can use it in talking to the patient and obviously if they're at high risk for mortality that's person that you want to treat aggressively and manage aggressively as opposed can also be used in the clinical research setting so when you're designing a clinical trial you want to risk stratify patients for whether or not they're high risk or low risk and you know involvement in a clinical trial in terms of what you expect them to outcomes and so this also has clinical trial um, design implications